Okay, this is a KX100 front fork. Um, obviously, I have the the uh, cap removed here, springs off, spring guide, everything has been removed. And I wanted to show you something I've been working on, and that's uh, the spacer. That's two-piece spacer, and uh, it has caps that go on each end to hold it together, like that. It's about an inch and a half. So what that'll effectively do is limit the travel under compression an inch and a half. So if you were to use these, you would lose an inch and a half of the travel. Um, but what I'm trying to do is set these up so that I can use a 21 inch front wheel and tire. And that might do it. I think inch and a half is about where I would need to be. Not sure that my wife's ever going to bottom the suspension out. She only weighs 115, 120 pounds, and she's not an aggressive rider. But just in case, I um, wanted to try to design something that would prevent the tire from coming all the way up and either hitting the fender or the frame. Not sure which it would hit first. Uh, these would go on down here. It puts a spacer between the stop and the uh, washer and rubber bump stop that's on the other end of the shaft down there. Well, normally this would... Um, when the shock is compressed, this rod would slide down. This would bump into the rubber bump stop that's up against the cartridge. Um, <clears throat> and that limits your um, upward travel of the uh, lower fork leg or tube. These inverted forks, um, <clears throat> the, convent, the naming convention get a little confusing. But anyway, um, I think you guys get the idea. So if I were to put a spacer here, whether it be one inch or one and a half inch, it would limit how much... Um, the fork could travel before it bottoms out. So by putting a one and a half inch spacer in here, it's gonna go up one and a half inches less than it would without the spacer, if that makes any sense. The way you'd put these on, you should slide this guy down and over that. Then you would put your two halves on. See if I could do this with one hand without dropping them. There, get a phone assist going here, there we go. And then you would slide your cap up like that. This would all be held together with a type of glue, probably CA. You would obviously need to clean everything up here before installing these because you don't want oil on parts you're going to glue. Uh, don't go down there. And let's see if I can get that down and around. There we go. And I'll put slide that down. So once this is all glued together, now you have an effective spacer. There is enough room around the outside edge of this so that oil can flow back down. Uh, I'm going to probably do a, a design change where there's a little, couple little passageways in each half that run the entire length on the inside. So oil can go down on the inside as well. Um, but anyway, there's your spacer and that would prevent your fork tube at the bottom, the part your tire is connected to, from coming up all the way. It would stop an inch and a half shy of what it would normally stop at, which would hopefully would keep the tire from hitting the fender or the frame. Um, I ordered some PLA G, which is oil resistant um, filament and has much more compression strength than this. This is actually done on a resin printer uh, with engineering resin. This, this would probably work, but I'm going to go with something that I know is oil resistant and is a little bit stronger. Um, I know that some people make these little spacers out of even just conduit, uh, plastic conduit, and it works. So this is probably overkill, but I want it to work and last. And I want it to survive, you know, being in a bath of oil its entire life. So um, I'll make a second part of this video when we actually have the, the uh, PLA printed version. And I'm gluing it together and installing it. And... Uh, We'll put that on YouTube, maybe. You know, that channel where you view a video, and if you like it, you get a thumbs up. And if you can, you subscribe, because it really helps. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Okay, here's the... Uh the nylon spacer, and right here is where I'm going to put it. 
So let me do that real quick. That will uh, limit how far up the shock can travel um, before it hits the bump stop, which there's a washer and then a rubber bump stop down on that end inside the, uh, the cup of the cartridge. So let's get this put on. Okay, we got this one mounted. And now when you put it back together without the spring and check the travel, I can show you the, dif the difference in distance. Um, here's the other one I haven't put on yet. You see there's grooves inside for fluid to travel down. The shaft is also, um, or the hole rather, is also one millimeter or 1.5 millimeters larger than the actual shaft. So fluid can flow around there. And the OD of this is much smaller than the spring. So fluid can flow down and around the spring as well. It's really not any bigger than this as far as if you include these guides for the shock or for the spring rather, sorry. So it should be fine. And like I said earlier, there's no damper holes in that portion of the rod all the way down to the cartridge. So this sliding up and down is not going to affect any damping. It shouldn't. Um, remains to be seen, but uh, I think it's going to work. Okay, so this is what we gained. The bottom line was without the spacer, top line is with the spacer. That's as far down as it will travel down. If I can hold that with my legs, there we go. That's the bump stop. Okay, got the string tied on so I can pull the uh, damper rod back up through the spring. So time to add the fork wheel. Well, that was a job. Actually, it wasn't too bad. Uh, the only difficulties I ran into was, you know, the wiring for the headlights, turn signals, etc. the stuff I've added. Um, as far as the KX100 front end, it bolts right on. Um, I mean, I put new steering head bearings, but I could have used the old ones. The exact same steering head bearing, exact same stem. Uh, let's see the front fender bolted right on. Doesn't seem to be rubbing anywhere. Uh, issues with the uh, the headlights, so I put the number plate back on for now. We might just go back to this being a dirt bike anyway. I don't know. The intention was to have a bike to ride on the street while I was riding my Africa Twin or my Himalayan or whatever she could ride with, but um, since she bought me that, you know, I'll, this is, these are the two bikes we'll be riding together. And obviously I'm not riding that on the street. So we might just go back to straight up dirt bike on this guy. Um, basically it is right now. It does have uh, the turn signals and the brake light in the back and the tag, but we could take that off pretty easily. But it came out pretty good. So yeah, 21 inch uh, front wheel. And the way I did that, you know, you saw earlier in the video, I made nylon spacers to go inside to limit the travel. So here are some marks here. That was without any spacers. So that's your full, like nine and a half inches of travel, I believe. With the um, two inch spacers I put in, we're back to about 8.8 .8 or 8.5 inches of travel. And I've got nine inches from there. To the top so it's close we'll have to ride it and see if that, what happens if we bottom it out um, I've got the forks pretty high on the triple clamp actually about as high as you can go I believe uh, right on the edge of where it starts to neck down here same here all for the short woman so she can ride things are difficult when you're four foot eleven and you want to ride motorcycles but anyway, came out pretty good. I like it. Uh, everything was pretty straightforward. I did use a uh, 
I think it's a KX100 or KX85 brake and bracket, but I use the 140 um, hose. You can see the speedometer just kind of dangling there for now. And I've got to figure out something with this. Does she flop around? What do we do? I don't know. I have to go look at a KX. Mirror's got to come off. I kept the tachometer and speedometer on there for now. We'll see. Obviously, the front end now is way better than the back end. I might order her a spring because basically I'd have most of the preload out so that she gets a little sag and she can reach the ground. But if I get a spring that I can leave most of the preload out, it's a little bit stiffer to match the front. I think it would ride better, but we'll ride it first before we make any more changes. Anyway, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you out there.